Greetings, family. I'm Overseer Designate, Dr. Crystal McQueen. Welcome to my show, Prophetic Atmosphere. But before we get into the show, I want to invite you to be my special guest at my Women of Prophetic Destiny Conference, June 9th through the 11th, 2022, in Toledo, Ohio. We will have some anointed speakers, some powerful praise and worship, and a thought-provoking topic for our noon sessions, the cross and the couch, with breakout rooms that you don't want to miss. Registration is free. Go to my website, www.ctkrm.org forward slash WOPD. Click on the registration tab to sign up. I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Now, let's go to the broadcast. Greetings, family, and welcome once again to my show, Prophetic Atmosphere. I am Overseer Designate, Dr. Crystal McQueen, and I am glad that you are here with me today. I want to talk about um, how our past is hindering us from embracing the new that God wants to do in our lives. I want to say that again. I want to talk about how our past is really hindering some of us from embracing the new that God really, really wants to do in our lives. I'm coming today from the passage of scripture from 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 14 through 21. We're going to do a little bit of reading um, on today, but it's going to be worth it. The book of 1 Kings chapter 19 verses 14 through 21. Let's read. And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. And I alone am left and they seek to take my life. This is Elijah talking. And then the Lord said to him, go, Return your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazel as king over Syria. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimishai, as king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Sapap of Abel Mehola, you shall anoint as a prophet in your stead or in your place. Excuse me. Verse 19. So he departed from there. And found Elisha, the son of Sapat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he was with the 12. Then Elisha passed by him and threw his mantle on him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elisha and said, please, let me kiss my father and my mother. And then I will follow you. And he said to him, go back again. For what have I done to you? So Elisha turned back from him, took a yoke of oxen, slaughtered them, slaughtered them and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. Come on, let's pray. Spirit of the living God, I come humbly and boldly to your throne of grace today. And I'm asking that you would give me the tongue of the learned so that I can clearly articulate and communicate your words to your people. Hide me behind the cross and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Amen. Let me start off by saying, family, that this message arose in my spirit during the conversation I had with one of my spiritual daughters. We were discussing about a certain projects or, or a series of projects that I had to work on. And I kept trying to explain to her uh, why I was having such difficulty um, producing. That's about the best way I can describe it difficulty producing. Now this is going to be basically a transparent message on today, 
but it, re it relates very clearly to what is possibly happening in some of y'all's lives. So she let me go on about a half an hour um, talking about, you know, the why, the challenges. You know, I was really unsure if I could devote my time and my, and my talents to all of this. And I was just going on and on and on. And she let me even talk for about a half an hour. And in the process, I was like, if I could just find something that's going to make this easier, if I could just, you know, maybe just, you know, make this decision to go over here and just make this easier. And this isn't really the first conversation that I actually had. I was even talking with uh, my husband concerning um, the same situation or the same projects. Um, and they both let me talk because that's all I was doing was running my mouth basically. And it was just, I wanted to just find something that I can fall back on that was just going to make this easier. And then family all of a sudden, and she let me run on and let me go on. And then when I was done and I finally had a chance to exhale, she looked me straight in the eye through the zoom camera. Okay. And she said something like this, and I want to quote her on this. I don't know if you realize it or not, but God has closed the book on that chapter of your life and you need to move on and respond to the call. I want to say that to somebody out there today. I don't know if you really, truly, honestly realize it or not, but God has closed the book on that chapter. Whatever that chapter may be in your life, he has closed that book on that chapter. And he has moved on from that place and you need to respond to the call. Now, granted, I didn't like what she said. I'm not, I'm going to be honest with you. It, I felt some kind of way. I really did. I felt some kind of way because I had already gotten on my soapbox of why I can't do and y'all don't understand. And you asking something from me that, you know, is too hard to give and too hard to do. And all this time while I was talking, the spirit of the Lord spoke to me after I, after we got done and I was just kind of in that place. She was still talking, but I kind of like exited that conversation. And you know how we do family when somebody says something we really don't want to hear. And we even though we're physically there, but our mind has shifted somewhere else and we're actually having a, a secondary conversation, but the conversation is really not something that uh, needs to be put out in the atmosphere. You understand what I'm saying? Those, those choice, choice, conversations, you know, those, those feelings and how you don't know, like I know, and how dare you say this and that. And the thing is, is while she was saying that, I was still sitting there listening to her and she said it in love. I'm gonna put it out there like that. She said it in love and I know she said it in love, but for that moment, that's not what my flesh wanted to hear. And I exited that conversation for just a half a second. And the spirit of the Lord spoke to me real clearly. And he said, daughter, you've lamented this place long enough. I moved on from here. And so should you. I can't make it no clear family. I can't make it no clear that I don't know how God talks to you. Okay. But I know how he talks to me. And that's exactly how he said it. Just as clear, just as in my face as, as he wanted to be and dared me to say something about it. He said, and I'm gonna help you and help those that are watching. He said, you've lamented this place long enough. I moved on and so should you. And I have a question for some of you. Are you still lamenting a place? Are you still lamenting a relationship? Are you still lamenting a job? Are you still lamenting a missed opportunity? Are you still lamenting what God was doing? How he used you mightily? Or are you ready to respond to the call? Are you really ready to respond to this next uh, prophetic dimension that God wants to place you in? Are you ready to respond to that next level in your prophetic destiny that God is calling you to be in? He's already created you for this place and that space. He's already done it. And so, I want to talk about that on today because we really need to get a clear understanding before we walk away that something has got to give and it's not God. Something on the inside of us, we have to come to that place where we're ready to nail this flesh to the cross, where we're ready to nail every excuse 
and ready to nail our, in, uh, our insecurities and our fears and our failures and our past experiences that really don't matter in the kingdom of God, really have nothing to do with where God is taking you. Now, I'm not speaking about traumatic situations in our lives. For those who have really dealt with some serious traumatic situations, there is nothing wrong with the cross and the couch. And you need to work that. Talk to somebody where you can work out uh, why you keep um, reverberating back to the past. It's okay. Do that. Do whatever you got to do. But at some point in time, you have to become whole. You got to respond to the purpose and the call and the mandate that God has on your life and my life. In 1 Kings 19, 14 through 16, we have Elijah. We call Elijah in a place of lamenting. We call Elijah in a place where he was complaining about where he came from and what and how he got to the cave he was in. And he was confronting God and, and, and having basically a pity party. He really was. He was having a pity party and in this prop in the cave and during his pity party, God still confronted him about his purpose. And one thing I want to bring out, the first point I want to bring out today is that we must stop lamenting the former places. We have to come to a place. I'm going to say that one more time. We got to really get it in our hearts and our minds. And this is a series of conversations, as I said before, not just one that I had with my spiritual daughter, but, you know, different conversations I've had with my husband and other people who are like, listen, I don't know what to tell you, but you need to get yourself together. And I'm saying that to you on today, man, woman of God, we, you and I, we, let's, let's just do this co corporately. Okay. So it don't look like I'm just pointing my finger at you. We really need to get ourselves together and understand we can preach to everybody else and we could teach to everybody else. But when it comes time for us to partake in what we have been teaching others, we have some serious difficulties in doing so. My first point again is that we must stop lamenting the former places. We must stop lamenting how it happened, what they said, what they did, keeping us up at night, why they did it. We're quick to quote the scripture family. I'm one just as well. We're quick to quote the scripture of, of Isaiah 43 and 19 says, behold, I do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. However, we seem to forget the first 10 words of that passage. The NIV says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. It's not in the Bible just because nobody had nothing else to do. It's in there because God realizes how detrimental us lamenting what we've lost is to us and our effectiveness in the kingdom. Dwelling on the past, on the past negatively affects our mental. It affects our physical. It affects our emotional. It causes depression. It causes anxiety. It can cause eating disorders. It affects your relationships. Dwelling on the past affects every aspect of your life. I know, I know we come up with every excuse. Nah, it don't, it, it affects this, but I can hold it together for that. No, 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 you can't because whatever affects you in one place will trickle over into the other areas, whatever you, and you can work hard. We all work hard because we do a very good job at wearing masks in society and we'll wear these masks and people will sit here and say, Oh, they got it all together. But the reality is that the past is eating us alive. Number two, it, it, dwelling in the past keeps us in a vicious cycle of self-sabotage and defeat. Self-sabotage and defeat. Oh yeah, that's you. 
that's you. Even in the conversation that I was having or conversations, let me go back. The one word that kept arising is you're self-sabotaging yourself. And here's the thing, family. At the time that I was having that conversation, you don't have to raise your hand because I know if I'm not, I'm not the only one, but we'll actually contemplate. Uh, yeah, maybe I am, but we don't realize that who and what is connected to us because the enemy and the enemy has us in the perception that the only thing it's really affecting is us. It ain't affecting nobody else. It's, it's, you know, it's me and my world not understanding that there's people that's connected to your world. There's people that connect that you're connected to. There's things that you are connected to that are affected by that negativity that are affected by you constantly reminding uh, us and everybody and yourself what happened when it happened. You don't understand why. And they said this and they said that and my and ma'am and sir, majority of the time, those ideas are your perception of how it looked. Because if we talk to the other party that was involved, they would tell us a whole nother different side of the story. Because we always want to put the story to make sure that we look good or to make sure that we look like the victim. To make sure that we come out with the win-win. But when the other person shows up and tells the other side of it or brings the other pieces to it, then we start putting two and two together and realize that you have some blame in that as well. We forget that as long as we dwell in the past, that it keeps us in a vicious cycle of self-sabotage and defeat. I don't care how much tongues you talking in. I don't care how much you lay hands. You will not come into the fullness of what God has ordained for you when you are constantly in a place of negativity, when you allow what happened, when you allow the past, when you allow those thoughts, that past, even dwelling in our past, honestly, family keeps us in a place of disobedience. Keeps us in a place of disobedience, keeps us in a place of failure, keeps us in a place well, we are really performing witchcraft. And you're wondering why. Well, for everybody else I can do, but when it comes down to my life, I can't make it happen. So why is that? One of the things that brought up that, that was very powerful during my conversation that I had with my spiritual daughter and the Holy Spirit trying to enlighten me on the, on the situation is that in 1 Kings 19 and 21, it says, So Elisha turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and followed Elisha and became his servant. Sometimes, family, we got to come to a, G, a come to Jesus moment and realize that we need to burn it down. We need to do whatever we can to burn it down, burn those things to ashes, burn those excuses to ashes, burn what happened in our past to ashes, burn who said what to ashes, burn how we constructed it in, my, in our mind and in our thoughts and in our emotions. We need to burn it all to the ground and let it die, burn it to ashes. There's um, people will have when they have a, a relationship that has been broken up, I have known people to say that I have took everything that hurt me and harmed me, that was uh, keeping me from moving forward, threw it in the ashtray, lit a match, and burnt it all to ashes. And I'm saying to you today that for we need to burn those things from our past to ashes. Burn those voices down to the ground that keep telling you, you can't do this. Burn uh, uh, these voices or these thoughts and ideologies. Uh, uh, get a hold of your thoughts. The Bible talks about that we must have the mind of Christ. And if you're constantly allowing your thoughts to keep you in a holding pattern, keep you in a place called stuck. If you're constantly having those thoughts, then what you're saying is that your mind needs to be renewed in a certain area. There's a stronghold that has been set up. And we, as the children of God, have to literally go to battle, go to war, and begin to 
fight and uproot those things that have been deeply ingrained in our hearts, in our minds, in our beliefs, in our spiritual DNA, I like to call it, and begin to burn it down with the word of God, with fasting, with prayer, uh, uh, with the preaching, uh, with, with uh, uh, going to God and just begin to have a come to Jesus and confront. You can't kill what you don't want to confront. You can't kill when you're trying to hold on to your belief system so hard that you're willing to risk everything around you. I even made a comment that I really, when I look back, I said, what, what in the world? Why did that even come out of your mouth? Because it, it, you, when we're trying to prove a point, we will die on the heel and the sword to prove a point that has already been refuted. And your flesh, because it wants to survive and to prove a point, it will cause you to say things, it will cause you to, to respond to things, it will cause you to act a certain way, so you can find yourself uh, dying on that hill, falling on your own sword, and then claim, why did they hurt me? I had to go and repent, family. I had to go and repent and talk to God for real and say, you know what, I don't know what that mess was, but I realize that I want to hold that higher than you. I realize that this has become an idol in my life. And let me stop there. Thank you, Holy Ghost. For some of you, your past has become your idol. Yes, it has. Your past has become your idol. That's why you can't let it go, because if you let it go, you have no long, you no longer have an identity of who you are. You've identified yourself through the pain, through the hurt, through the struggle, through the shame, through the rebel. You identified yourself in your past. And so when God confronts that and said, this is not who I called you to be, I'm commanding and calling you and demanding especially in this season, demanding you to change. And all we're trying to do is hold on and shackle ourselves down and, and root ourselves deeper in our past. Then what you are saying to God is that it is an idol and I will worship my past before I worship you. We need, help me Jesus, and deliver us all today. We need to figure out how to burn up our past spiritually, how to burn it up emotionally, how to burn it up psychologically. We need to do the very tenacity that you have to hold on to where you are is the very tenacity that you need to use to get free. This family, this place, as I said, burn it down, burn it all down. I promise you, burn it all down. It hasn't done you any good all this time. Burn it down. Get the, burn it down, root it up, tear it down, rip it out. Do everything that we like to prophesy for everybody else. It's time for you, for us to do it for ourselves. Burn it down. Whatever it is, burn it down. Because here's why. When you set it on fire, when you set it on fire, when you burn it down, when you, when you uh, uh, make it your business, make it your business to be set free, you realize that there's nothing to return to. Ah! When I burn something down, when I burn it to ashes and blow it in the wind, then I realize there's nothing for me to return to. I have no other choice but to embrace the new. Still talking about that new. I have nothing in choice, uh, nothing uh, left but the choice to embrace the new. When I set something on fire, when I, when I refuse, when I do everything within myself to fight to get free, fight to be made whole, fight to have thoughts that, uh, uh, that are highly favored, thoughts that are kingdom minded. When I burn it down and realize that the gifts and the talents that are inside of me are for his purpose and that I need to dig deep and begin to pull those things up, which were spoken of, which were prayed over, which were prophesied, which was spoken over yours and my life. Then I realized that when I burned down all that negativity crap that has been, that I've allowed to exist in my life, I realized there's nothing to return to. And that family is the scary thing for some of us because we realize if I burn this down, what do I have left? What do I have to return to? What other choice do you have? 
He said in 1 Kings 19 and 20, then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, please let me kiss my father and my mother and then I will return to you. My third point and final, respond to the call. Respond to the call. We must embrace the new that God is doing in us and respond to his call. Family, let me help you. The call is there, but God is not obligated to wait on you forever for you to answer it. The season and the time that we are in right now, everything and everybody is in perfect alignment. And if you allow yourself to remain in that broken place, allow yourself to lament the past, allow yourself to refuse to burn things down, refuse to face it and deal with it in its rawness, then you miss opportunities and spaces in, in the spirit realm and in the natural. Sometimes the people that God will allow to cross your path are only there for a season. Nobody's going to be there forever while they're waiting on you to finally get yourself together. Moments and times are just that moments, seasons and times. And we must be like the sons of Issachar being able to discern the time and the season that we are in. We must embrace the new that God is doing in us and respond to his call. And as long as we continue to be obedient, we can't mess it up because God is always going to make sure that he shines. And if you do what he's called you to do, I do what God has really called me to do. God is always going to make sure that he shines through you. I want you to be encouraged today, family. I pray that what I said which began to shake you. Even if you got mad about it, it's okay. Because even in that conversation that I had, I had to get upset about it because I realized that, you know what? I was really acting some kind of way. And I realized that I really was trying to prove the reason why I did not want to move from out of that place. But family, I had to repent. I had to go before God and say, you know what? Help me burn it all to the ground. Help me to embrace what you have called me to do. And I challenge you on today to just do the same. Ask the Lord to help you. In fact, let's pray right now, family. Say, Father, forgive me for lamenting my past and using it as an excuse to stay stuck. Help me to burn down everything that is blocking me in my emotions and my feelings, my thought life, everything that's attached to me, that's blocking me and keeping me in a cycle of negativity, trauma and defeat. I humbly submit to your will for my life and I accept and respond to the call on my life. I choose to follow you. I ask all of this in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. And also family, we're praying this prayer for those of you who may not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior. I want to connect with you and just pray with you. All you got to do is just say these few words with me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died on the cross for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and my life. Help me to follow you and to trust you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, family, welcome to the kingdom of God. We here are believing and praying with you that the Lord is going to lead you to the right uh, church, that you'll be able to grow in him, in the kingdom, and to fulfill his prophetic destiny and call on your life. I am Overseer Desnit, Dr. Crystal McQueen. I thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next week for another show at Prophetic Atmosphere. Be blessed. Thank you for watching the Prophetic Atmosphere broadcast. We pray that this message has inspired you to live out your prophetic destiny as God has intended for you. Please connect with us at www.ctkrm.org forward slash WOPD or scan the QR code on your screen to go to the website where you can learn more about us. Don't forget, sign up to receive our newsletter. 
read about our upcoming events, or see about attending or hosting a Women of Prophetic Destiny conference in your area. We encourage you to sow into this ministry and help us to continue to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. We thank you in advance for allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to your hearts concerning supporting this kingdom work. Please know that your contributions are appreciated and that every seed counts. Join us next week for the next Prophetic Atmosphere broadcast. Until then, may God bless you and keep you is my prayer.